In the summer of 1997, I lived in New York and I had just woken up to the news that Princess Diana had died. And you know how they do, they put 1960 to 1997. And I still couldn't understand because the volume of the television was off. It was so unbelievable. It was such a shock because it, it felt as if Diana was too big to die. And that year had been a very tumultuous year because for those of us that remember, Mother Teresa had passed away, Janet Versace had been killed in Miami, but Princess Diana's death was huge. And just like everybody else, the boys, William and Harry, everybody, I, 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 oh, I'm, so, I'm even becoming emotional thinking about it. We all said, Harry and William, Harry and William, because they were so young. Harry was 12, William was 15. And we followed the death, we followed the shock throughout. And how Britain really howled, they howled. It was such a loss. And they wept and they cried for Diana. And they kept on saying, we'll take care of Harry and William. We will take care of them. We want to see them because I think they were in Balmoral at the time. And the queen at that time didn't want to bring the children out. Let us protect them from the press. And that was another thing. To find out that she had died in pursuit by the press in Paris in a tunnel by a drunk driver. And even as she lay in the back of the car dying, the press swarmed all over the car, not to save her, but to take pictures of her. In all fairness, I can almost think how they thought that she wouldn't die. I can almost think that. And that has stayed with me all these years, watching Harry and William grow. I remember when William was getting married to Kate and as Kate walked up the aisle, I kept on saying, wouldn't it have been wonderful for Diana to have seen her son get married. Because I think we as people, humans, and a lot of you that watch my channel, you know that I lean towards human nature. Human nature for me always shows the truth. It's the most authentic thing about us because we can't change our nature. So when we saw William standing there, the future king, grown up, such a handsome young man as Harry, and to see Kate walk up that aisle. I do not think there's not one person, not one person that did not think of Diana. Because somehow, we all became mothers to these boys because we knew Diana, because we loved Princess Diana so very much. And of course, we know the history of her marriage and we just felt some way that we will always take care of William and Harry. And so, when I was in New York watching this horrific scene unravel in front of my eyes on the television, there were two little boys, 12 year old and a 15 year old, who had just found out that their mother had passed away. I don't think it would be, you know, extraordinary to say because children do lose their parents. But I do think it is extraordinary when you do lose a parent 
in an accident, suddenly. And there are people taking pictures of her soon-to-be corpse. That does live with you. That does change you. That does really mentally affect you. William's destiny is set. He's going to be king. His future is set. Harry, on the other hand, will have to figure out what he has to do with his life. And I believe that Harry went through very terrible mental torture. Harry and William are brothers, they're not twins. And just like any family with siblings, they're different. One is this way, one is that way. I'll use my family. My sister and I, wonderfully close. Complete opposites. There's a video of us on this channel you can watch. I'll, I'll put the link below. Complete opposite. Complete opposite. And yet we are born of the same mother and of the same father. And we love each other terribly. We speak to each other multiple times a week. She's in New York. I am here in London. We're opposite. And that's normal. And I believe that Diana's death affected Harry more than we ever know. I believe that he lived with it. I believe that he tried some way, somehow to cope with the dynamics of his family. He had lost his mother, and part of his mother's great sorrow was a woman that eventually became his stepmother. That takes a lot to swallow. But somehow, Harry functioned. And when Kate came into the family and became William's wife, Harry became the third, and they were all so happy. And I believe that that is what Harry wanted everybody to believe. He wore this mask and he pretended that he was on the top of the moon. But he suffered greatly. He suffered deeply and I believe that he suffered about a lot of things that, that his brother did not know about and that his father did not know about. And he kind of found a way to function. So he went to university, he had girlfriends, he fought in the war, and then he met Megan. And I truly believe that Megan could have been anybody. I truly believe that Harry already had his own ideologies about his family, his own ideologies about the press, his own ideologies about what he wanted to do. He, in essence, as far as I am concerned, used Megan as a way out. Megan could have been anybody, but Megan was the one that he loved, that he adored. She was different. She is black, half black, multiracial. And I think that when he met Megan, perhaps for the first time in a long time, he felt free. He felt free from the demons. Because before Megan, we really didn't hear too much about Harry. He wasn't on the cover of all of the newspapers or all, all of the magazines. He wasn't any of that. Until he met Megan. And I believe, and let us agree to disagree because I know some of you might say otherwise, I truly believe that when the press started hounding Megan, it awoke in him a roar that had been laid dormant for years. 
it awoke in him a hatred that he had tried all these years to subside. Because let us forget about everything for one second. Let's forget about everything. If your mother died the way Diana did, would you be able to get along with the press? If your mother was killed by a Mexican, excuse my Mexican family, I'm just using all the French or, or whomever, by the British, whatever. If your mother was killed by a Mexican, would you be able to go to Mexico on vacation and have a Mexican best friend? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is the same press that hounded my mother. And I'm not blaming the press for her death. It was the drunken driver who should have the experience for situations such as this because the press go after whomever. I don't think it would sit well with me. I don't think if I knew that you, the press, were responsible for a lot of anguish for my mother, to my mother, while she was alive. I don't think I will be your greatest fan. And if I got married and you started to hound my husband, I think I would be like, you motherfuckers are here again. I think I would say it. I think I would think it. And I think I would say it. And I think that was where Harry was coming from. I think that he has lived a very sad life. And we forget and we move on with our lives and we think, ah, you're okay. And through experience, I have learned that you have to check on those that smile because they are masking. And I think that when Harry realized that he couldn't get the support and the help that he needed because he was already broken down and he couldn't keep up the facade, couldn't keep up and take care of Megan, he said, you know what, let me get up out of here. And I think there's a sadness for me because it wouldn't have mattered who Harry had brought wouldn't have mattered. I would have looked at Harry to see him go all these years so very well, himself and his brother, to be fair. And I say, Harry, are you happy? You're happy? Okay. I would have done it for his mother. I would have done it for Diana. Because I think we 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 owed them that. Because the press only take pictures because they can get money from it. Because these magazines sell. Because these stories sell. So we were part of it. The press will continue to do what they do so long as there is what a demand. That was why when Megan was in England I didn't buy a single paper. I didn't read a single article because you have to starve it so that they can stop hounding her. And so this young boy that's turned into a man, they hounded his mother and he said, I'm not going to let you do that to my wife. I would rather leave because really what kind of life have I had? It's true. What kind of life have I have not lived? I'm not living. But I have a chance. I do have a chance of some sort of life if I go with her. But she's up for no negotiation. I'm not going to give her up for you because you've given me nothing all these years. And so we have the book Spare. It's supposed to have been released next week, but it leaked in Spain. And before the book, we had the Netflix docuseries, which I am going to review. I was just sick and my nanny was sick, so I didn't have time to review it last year, Christmas, but I'll review it. But I wanted to dedicate this episode to Harry. The way I remember 
his mother, the way I remember Harry. The psychoanalysis of how everything has now spilled out. And a lot of people will say, why is he airing out dirty laundry from the family unit? I think it's wild because we as the British public think that we own Harry the way that we speak and we really don't. Harry and Meghan have had their story told by royal reporters and media for so many years. This is a young man who's setting straight 38 years worth of lies and briefings about him. And the worst thing for abusers is when abused people find their voices. And if you think that one Oprah Winfrey interview and a couple of podcasts and a book even come close to making that up, you're wrong. If Harry took another five years worth of doing interviews and press media, it wouldn't be enough to put a Lifetime's narrative straight. Is that right, Claire? Well, I wonder why then, if it's not going to do that, why is he doing it? I mean, it just seems well, to be that... doing it. Well, I'll answer that question for you. There are two things that Harry and Meghan are doing by doing all this media. They're selling books and podcasts and interviews because the British public wanted them to earn their own living. So instead of living off taxpayers' money like the rest of the royal family, Harry and Meghan are earning their own living and making their own way in life. And secondly, and more importantly, perhaps that we don't touch on enough, is in future years, when history is retold, it will be retold with Harry's point of view you included, instead of historians in the future believing only what the media told us. This time we're hearing it from the horse's mouth. So it's really important that Harry and Meghan's point of view is out in public, not I once think, or twice, but repeatedly, think, because history has shown us that with the right PR, it's possible to rewrite the narrative. Yeah. It's the way Fumi Nation are here. I don't respond to negative comments. Fumi Nation does it for me. <laughs> That is fact. I don't have to do it. I have my Fumi Nation army because uh, Christina and I were talking about Fumi Nation the other day. And Christina said, Fumi, Fumi Nation is an army. And I said, yes, they are. Of integrity, of love, of fabulosity, of sisterhood. I see how, and it, you bring me to tears, how you support each other in the comments. I, um, I have watched so many other channels and I rarely see the support for each other in the comments. I rarely see it, but I see it with Fumi Nation. I see the sisterhood, how you talk to each other, how you say, what's your number? This is my email. Get in touch with me. It's beautiful to see. And I see how you respectfully disagree with each other and myself also. That was what brought about Christina saying that they are such an army. They are such a sisterhood on their own. And I say yes. Oh, I'm crying. Oh my God. It's an emotional day, I'm telling you. So much misery all over the place. It's been a rough year for the royal family. And Prince Harry continues to add to their headaches. British tabloids obtained a copy of his upcoming memoir and leaked some bombshells from the book. Harry claims that Prince William physically attacked him during an argument over his wife, Meghan. He also sat down with Michael Strahan, who asked him about it. Watch this. How would your mom feel about your relationship with your brother now? I think she would be, I think she would be sad. I think she'd be looking at, looking at it long term to know that there are certain things that we need to go through to be able to heal the relationship. Um, I have felt the presence of my mum more so in the last two years than I have in the last 30. Oh, wow. You know, it seems like they, everyone at the royal family treats Meghan like Yoko Ono. Yeah. Yoko Ono allegedly broke up the Beatles and she became the pariah of that yeah. uh, generation. It's almost the same thing here. I mean, yeah. why would William, if this is all true, why would William be so upset with Meghan and go after her to her husband? I mean, there's something bizarre about this. Well, some, some are speculating that, um, and, and Harry has sort of said this, that they, um, <coughs> they were outshined by Meghan and Harry and they wanted to be the shiny things. 
And I think that's probably what happened. Um, that does, and, because that he was supposed to be the heir, mm -hmm. and Harry's supposed to be the spare. I know. And now you've got this, this, this new, you know, this, this, this couple yeah. that everyone was in love with. I think it was a missed opportunity, as I said before, um, to really grasp the ever-changing country and the, the look of, of the UK. They should have welcomed her and welcomed her culture, and they did not. I think there was a lot of uh, bigotry going on. Mm -hmm. But people that are saying, like, why is he, you know, doing this publicly? Well, he's doing it publicly because he tried to do it privately. And rather than reconcile with him and talk about it, the royal family decided to leak things to the press. So does anybody his, on the panel think that maybe Meghan has anything to do with this? Because she seems to be the sainted one at this panel. Uh, I, I, listen, I, I don't know that there's uh, many saints alive uh, mm -hmm. today. And I, I just, at this point, I find all of these stories incredibly painful because we are seeing the disintegration of a family yeah. unit in front of our eyes. And yes, it's tea and it's entertaining and they're, the, and they're monarchy and they're an institution, but they're also a family. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that the wounds that are being revealed are going to be harder and harder to heal uh, with, with so much publicity. And I don't know if it's because they're monetizing it. I don't know if it's because they want to remain relevant. I don't know million. if it's because they're... 40 million for the book. Okay, so it, I don't know if it's, you know... Well, so his family cut him off, so, you know, I, I don't yeah, fault him for making money on no, his truth. No, saying. exactly. I don't. I mean, we don't know which, which it is, right? Or if it's a combination mm -hmm. of all of that. Uh, but, the, but what we do know is that it is the disintegration of a, of family, a family, and that is sad. It well, is. Sonny, one I thing that, that I always thought is when... I never really have followed royals or really cared until Meghan and Harry, because mm -hmm. there was something there that pulled you in. Yeah. And I think this is the one of the many problems with a birthright. You got it by birth, you didn't earn it. Because when you look at the way that Meghan and Harry worked a room, mm -hmm. there was an energy, a charisma that pulled you into them. And I think that overshadowing is much yeah. of the problem with other layers to it. Yeah. But I think that's the problem. When you're born into a role that you did not do anything to earn, but pop out of <laughs> we know where. We know where they part out. We know. A birthday cake. Yes, <laughs> that part. Um, I think that speaks volumes because yeah. uh, Meghan does seem a lot like Princess Diana, his yeah. mother. And like that uh, ability to connect with people is not something you can be taught. And I don't think the other couple has it. You know, thing. we focus a lot, though, on the royal family. And this has also led to the disintegration of Meghan's family. With her, her with relationship her father, with her dad. You know, she had that crazy half-sister. I mean, the, the entire thing has... I mean, so it, there's been a lot of personal cost to to this life that they've chosen and you know she chose he didn't i i the, to me it's just very very sad the vitriol against megan has yeah. been unbelievably sick oh harry there's a guy i want to read something yeah. there's a guy a, a british broadcaster his name is jeremy clarkson mm. okay works for the sun mm. <laughs> our favorite <laughs> our favorite yeah they, they make up stuff every Who's minute on this they make stuff? up so much <laughs> stuff about tabloid. us all the time anyway he this is in his column i'm just going to read what he said about megan at night, I'm unable to sleep as I lie there, grinding my teeth and dreaming of the day when she, Megan, is made to parade naked through the streets of every town in Britain while the crowds chant shame oh, and throw of lumps of excrement at her. That's now, from Game he, of has, he had a lot of public backlash for that, and he, he apologized, and they took the, the thing down. But what type of idiot writes something like this Someone about a person, a girl... <laughs> Who lives in the world, who's trying to wake up in the morning and get through the day. I don't think we can ignore the racial component. What a here. disgusting pig. I don't think we pig. can ignore the racism and the bigotry, bigotry that she faced. And classism, and, and they too, I And think. classism, but I, I think it, it, it had racial, much yeah. more to do with yeah. race. And the royal family made all of its money on the backs of black and brown people, stole a lot of that wealth. Had slaves, participated in the slave trade. Well, That's why this was such a missed opportunity. They should right. have embraced her and brought their country closer together. Yeah. We've seen um, we've seen this story before, right? Mm -hmm. We saw it with Wallace, Wallace Simpson. Yeah, and oh. and she was a pariah, and she was blamed, and she was the one that was given all the responsibility of Edward advocating the, the throne. But but then there is this additional the racial, racial component. Because you see, this God that we pray to. He's the architect of us all, and he will put things in place, I promise you. He will put things in place that you could never have imagined. It's a tough one to swallow. I don't know how many, how many of us, how many of us would sit back and watch how strangers insult our spouses. 
you read it in the press constantly how they're insulting your wife. Jeremy Clarkson insulted Megan. It was an insult. I don't care whether he was taking a clip from the Game of Thrones or from the Thrones of Game. I don't care. Jeremy Clarkson, I put it to you. Would you talk about your wife like that? Would you talk about your daughter like that? Because she made a public statement and said, I don't agree or tolerate what my father said about Megan. Try it with me. Try it with me and say something crazy like that about Ula and just see me really go all the way off. Try it. Just try it and see. And you think that it's okay. And it's okay for Harry to be reading all of this. And you'll be treating his wife like this. Absolutely goddamn not. And so we wait for the book Spare, which will be released next week. I think where I wanted to come from was, it's so sad. It's just sad for me. How everything has turned out. And how that summer of 1997, how so many of us said we would take care of Harry. We made that promise to Diana. And how so many of us have forgotten. And I just feel that to let the press continue the way that they do is wrong. That Jeremy Clarkson can say that he would want Megan to be naked, to be paraded through the streets and for excreta to be thrown at her. That's what he said. And the Sun published it. So you know that it had to go through different stages. Minimum, five people saw this article before they printed it. And Jeremy Clarkson attended the Christmas party at Buckingham Palace. Yes, he did. Himself and Piers Morgan. They were invited by Camilla Parker Bowles. The Queen's consort. So, if you are gauging with my enemy, in turn you've become my enemy. Doesn't it kind of look like that? Doesn't it feel that way? Nobody respects your wife. They can talk trash about her, and it's okay. And then your stepmother invites them to the Christmas party. It's interesting, isn't it? The stars of Suits on Twitter. Yeah. And in five minutes, I got this direct message from Meghan Markle. A private message, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it said, uh, hey, I'm, I'm a big fan, and I'm you know, so excited you're following me. And this is she about, said to you. Yeah, it was about three years ago. And um, you know, I replied, and then another guy in Suits, uh, who plays another character, we, he got involved too. And we, we corresponded quite regularly on Twitter, publicly and privately. Yeah. She began sending me early copies of uh, Suits episodes. Right. She'd email me from, you know, places like Rwanda. I thought we had a good sort of friendship building. She then said, I'm coming to London to watch the tennis with Serena Williams, yeah. who's her friend, and I, I know Serena well too. And she said, would you like to meet up for a drink? I said, come to my local pub. You know, I'm an Irishman, come to my pub. <laughs> um, so she came to my local pub in Kensington, ironically about half a mile from Kensington Palace, yeah, yes. where she now lives. Nobody knew who she was, but she walked in. I remember the locals, right, all these old guys like, like this, drinking their pints, and then walks Meghan Markle like a million dollars. But they didn't know who she was, but they thought she's something Beautiful. special. Yeah, yeah. We had a two hours in the pub. She had a couple of dirty martinis and a couple of pints. We got on brilliantly. And then I put her in a cab, and it turned out to be a cab that took her to a party where she met Prince Harry. And then the next night, they had a solo dinner together, and that was the last I ever heard from Meghan Markle. <laughs> <laughs> and I have never heard from her again. So what happened? In she, your, uh, she, she ghosted me, Ryan. Meghan Markle ghosted did, me. Did she, do you think she just went, 
Go. I'm afraid. I, look, I really liked it. This is why it hurts. <laughs> no, I, uh, I really liked her. Uh, I just think she's a slight social climber. I'm afraid. And when I see the way, I mean, look at her wedding. There was only one member of her family there. The rest couldn't be risked. They were like, considered too dangerous. But do you think um, she was told, Morgan, off the list? Well, I can imagine her having dinner with Prince Harry mm -hmm. and saying, "Oh, I, I know this great." English guy, Irish as it turns out. Yeah. I know this great guy, and he's a good friend of mine. I've just been with been the pub with him. <laughs> What's Harry's his name? like, oh really? Who's that? It's it's Piers Morgan. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get him out of here. Black. Pen. Yeah. So that, um, but I, I didn't really like being ghosted like that. I thought it was a yeah. bit of a strange thing to do. Mm -hmm. And then the other guy, I won't name him, but there's another actor in the suits, and he he did the same. I didn't hear from him either. So he'd been shut down, and then he popped up after the wedding, which he was at. I saw him on TV, and I thought, really. Not a word from either of you. And then he pops up apologising and saying, I'm so sorry and hope you understand. Well, I didn't understand yeah. that. Had he been told not to be yes, in touch he'd with been, you? Yes, he'd been told to ghost me as well. I was going to make the point, Alex, that something very different happened with Prince Harry was that he was in a relationship with a woman who was very different. And, and he felt, they felt, that the press then turned on them and was racist. They, they, they have had an overwhelming amount of negative press. Um... You know, I watched the program yesterday, and yes, they had some great press around the wedding, but what press is going to trash someone's special day? There was bad press around uh, the engagement, before the engagement, and everything that has followed since has been incredibly damaging, quite clearly, to Meghan's mental health and also to Harry. And, and, and I hear Piers say that, you know, William has gone through the, the, the same thing. But do you know what? Siblings experience tragedy in their life and one will be absolutely fine and brush it off and the other will not be able to deal with it so strongly. And that's clearly what has happened with Prince Harry in this situation. He walked behind his mother's coffin at a tender, tender age in front of the globe. That is going to shape a young boy for the rest of his life. So I think that we need to all take a step back. Mm. And I understand that you don't like Meghan Markle. You've made it so clear a number of times on this programme, a number of times. And I understand that you've got a personal relationship with Meghan Markle or had one and she cut you off. She's entitled to cut you off if she wants to. Has she said anything about you since she cut you off? I don't think she has, but yet you continue to trash her. OK, I'm done with this. No, no, no. Sorry. No. Uh, Sorry. So, do you know what? That's pathetic. You can trash me, but not my... No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm being... So... Sorry. Can't this do this. This is absolutely diabolical behaviour. You, he, I'm sorry, but Pierce spouts off on a regular basis and we all have to sit there and listen. 6.30 to 7 o'clock yesterday was incredibly hard to watch. Incredibly hard to watch. It's very hurtful. It's very, very, very hurtful. I want you guys to fill up this comment section. I want you guys to tell me how you feel. Disagree, agree, you just let me know. I just came from a place where we as humans, how much can we take? How much should we take? Could we take what Harry, Meghan, William, Prince Charles, Princess Diana, Camilla, could we take what they have taken? As a young girl, I wished to be a princess. Now I know it's the worst thing you could wish for anybody, to be in that gilded bowl. Absolutely not. It's not made for most of us. And for that, I applaud every member of the royal family because they were born into it. It was not a choice. To be in that gilded bowl, to be in that fish bowl, to be scrutinized of every single thing, it is a lot to take. Ever since Harry met Meghan, it was like watching Diana all over again. It really was. I just wanted to talk about Harry exclusively here. In many ways, I look and I see so very much that Harry is truly Diana's son. And in many ways, he's taken over where Diana started. But in so doing, Harry, 
I want you to also see it didn't make any difference. Those that loved your mother love her still. It will never change. Love your family. Take care of your family and find your way. And a lot can happen, a lot can change. We just talk and we try to give our own perspective. Blood is thicker than water. You guys are family and you guys will patch up. We don't know. The press can say whatever. But you guys are brothers and you guys are blood. And when the time comes, the time will be right. I want Harry to know this. Harry, it's okay. Because those that love you, they don't need you to justify anything. And those that don't care will never care. They will never care. So in you telling your story for the history purposes, yes. Let go, let God. After your book, after whatever you have already put in place, leave it be. But I applaud you for your courage and for you being so very brave. And I remember you as a, such an adorable little boy. And I truly wish you the best. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, hit the notification button, my darlings. Give us some super thanks. And I will see you very, very soon. All of my love, darlings.